is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with my other prediction and my top five power fours. This one was a lot easier because it's not really that many great power fours to begin with. But what I will say is it still was fun to do this list. And the number one is going to be a new number one for this year going into this season and potentially for a little bit. Um, he's going to have some competition for that spot, but at the same time, who doesn't? And the person that's right behind him is not that far behind him. So it's going to be interesting to see how this power forward situation works out and what happens with it. Um, all I can say is I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. But... When I look at this list, it's a position that's dying a little bit, but it also got a little bit of life with the, the upper echelon of the top three are legitimate superstars and can really impact winning and are versatile and can do multiple things. But what, without further ado, let's get into it. Number five, Draymond Green. And when you look at Draymond Green numbers last year, you look at the season that he had, he was out of shape. He, he really didn't have the numbers to really back it up. Uh, he wasn't the same defender that he was when he won Defensive Player of the Year. He, he still was a great defender, but he wasn't that elite game-changing defender in the regular season. But we did see Draymond Green get unleashed once Kevin Durant and DeMarcus Cousins went out against Houston and against Portland. He really showed that he still is one of the elite players in this league at his position and his ability to switch, his ability to get in the passing lane, his ability to block shots while also being a great rebounder and still being an amazing facilitator. Um, he really showed us that we might be sleeping on Draymond and with him getting a contract extension, him still playing in Golden State and with Steph Curry and Steve Kerr, him still being a vocal point of that offense and a guy that they need to be the best since Klay Thompson is out and no Kevin Durant or DeMarcus. I think this is going to be a year where we see the Draymond be back on the all NBA and all star team. And if that's the case, he is a top five player at his position. But like I said, if you go based off regular season last year, he wasn't. But going based on what he did in the playoffs and what he did this up and coming year, he's going to be used and he's going to have to do a lot more. I think that's going to make Draymond back in this top five. Number four, LaMarcus Aldridge. And a lot of people sleep on LaMarcus because he ain't the flashiest player. He don't play in the biggest market. Um, but they've been winning. He made it to the Western Conference Finals. He has been able to compete. Yeah, they got put out in the first round, but it was a hard fought first round. And it could have went either way. But you have to give credit to the um, Denver Nuggets for beating them and closing that series out. But LaMarcus still has aged pretty well. He doesn't really rely on a lot on athleticism. He used a lot of his height to get shots off. He has a soft touch, a great free throw shooter, decent rebounder. He, he went back a little bit as a rim protector, but he showed that he can do that. Even though he is getting older, he's the model of consistency. He knows his game. He knows what he's good at. He knows how to get his shots. And he's still going to be able to do that at his age. Just get hit in a couple spot-up threes and a couple spot-up mid-range. Um, getting that post fade away every once in a while. And he got a lot of athletes on his team this year. That's going to allow him to get a lot of open shots. And all he has to do is just knock those down. And if he does that, he's going to be efficient. And he's going to have a chance to be an all-star again in the West. If San Antonio make the playoffs like I think they are, then somebody on this team has to be an all-star. I think it's going to be between DeRozan and LaMarcus, just like it was last year. And if you're in that conversation, you're one of the best players at your position. If you're in the conversation for all-NBA and in the conversation for all-star team, then guess what? You are elite. You're one of the best players in the game. So LaMarcus has been that over the years, and he has continued that. And I think that he'll be fine, but I have him at number four. Number three, I have Blake Griffin. You guys know I was one of the guys that never gave up on Blake Griffin, never trash talk him. I said he will be back. He will be an all-star, and I think that he can help the Pistons get back to the playoffs, and he did all that. He was an all-star. He was an all-NBA player, and he showed that he can still help a team win. 
And he, when he was gone, the team was terrible. When he was there, it was one of the best teams in the NBA. And he was as health, his healthiest season, too. Even though he did get injured and hurt his knee, he got the surgery. He'd been out for months. He should be recovered. He should be ready to go, like they said. And if that is true, I think Blake Griffin has found a way to reinvent himself. He found a way that he can, you know, last in his league. He still was one of the best scorers in the NBA. He still is one of the best passing beat mans in the entire NBA. And when you look at all that, you have to give the man his credit. He has put in the work, and it has really worked out for him. And I don't think that that's going to stop. A lot of people are writing Blake Griffin off, saying, oh, it was one year. Oh, he's not going to be able to stay healthy. Oh, he's he, he, that was a season, and that's going to be the last of it. I don't look at it like that. Blake Griffin has been one of the best players in the world. He has continued to work on his game. He's he's a better free throw shooter, better three point shooter, better ball handler, better playmaker, and he's still a solid rebounder. And he don't even play nothing like he played when he first came in to lead. That just shows you his work ethic. And that just shows you that if you focus on the right things and you put in the right work, you can last in this league. And for him to be a twenty point scorer and for him to help this team make it to the playoffs, and I have him doing it again, you have to have him as one of the elite players in the league. He's one of the best ones. He's in that top thirty. And with that being said, he's number three on this list. And the reason why he's not higher is just because he's not the defender the other two guys are. Number two is going to be Anthony Davis. This guy has a chance to really do something special this year, playing with LeBron James, the best teammate he has ever played. And he's still in the Western Conference. He's been an All-NBA and an All-Star in the Western Conference. So it isn't like you see switching conferences or you going to the easier conference. He's still in a tough conference. And he's going to be asked to do a lot. I, I look at that starting lineup. They're going to need somebody to carry them. They're going to need somebody to really offset LeBron. And I think that Anthony Davis, he wanted to be in L.A. He wanted the spotlight. He wanted an opportunity to go here. And it's going to have a lot of expectations. He got a lot of hype. But I think Anthony Davis, will, he will he'll realize it. He did it in high school. He did it in college, and he did it with the Pelicans, becoming their number one pick, becoming an all-star quickly, becoming one of the top ten players in the league already, be getting a lot of achievements already on his resume. And he's building up a Hall of Fame career, and he's been healthier than he has ever been. He had injury problems in the beginning, and he's been able to fix that. So when you look at Anthony Davis, it's not much he can't do. The weakest part of his game is just a three-point shot. Other than that, the guy can hit mid-range, he can dunk, he can shoot free throws, he can block and contest shots, he can get steals, he can take over games, he can really dominate a game on both sides of the court. And it looks like he's really determined to show that he, he can possibly be the MVP of this league, that he can possibly be the best player in this league. And people thought that he can get there. And if he can have the team success, which he has lacked over the last couple of years, that can be the missing piece outside of the three in his career, just being able to win games. And he hasn't been able to do that, only making it to the playoffs twice. Hopefully, going to L.A., he can make it to the playoffs every season and really show that he is one of the elite players at this league, which I think he already is. But he still has to win. And that's the only question about Anthony Davis is, can you win a championship with Anthony Davis as your best player? Can you win a championship? in L.A. when LeBron is there. He's only there for a couple more years, and he's only going to be as good as he can be those couple years because he's getting older, and they so off age-wise as a duo. So um, one thing I will say is LeBron should be happy that he got a guy like A.D. They traded a lot of their youth for A.D., and they was able to get a lot of veterans to offset that with A.D. So the roster is good. The floor spacing is there. LeBron showed that he can still play at a great level, and so can AD. So they're going to be a dynamic duo, and they're going to be tough. Number one, we all know, is going to be Giannis. I actually think AD is a little bit more complete player than Giannis, but the only reason why I put Giannis at number one isn't because he's not a complete player, or he is. It's because of team success. This is a guy that was on the number one team in the NBA. This is a guy that has helped his team get to the Eastern Conference Finals and go up 2-0. So it shows you that you can win with Giannis, and you can really – have a great team with Giannis as your best player. The only difference is, can they repeat that? Can they get back to the Eastern Conference Finals? Can they make it to the NBA Finals? Can he lead them to a championship um, at this point? He is a power forward this year. 
Um, Chris Middleton is going to play the three. I think Giannis is quick and fast and tall enough to defend and play that position. And he also is strong enough to play the power forward position. But I think that that's going to be his advantage. He had an advantage at small forward because he was bigger and taller than everybody. And now he's going to be faster and quicker than most players at that power forward position. Plus, he is an active defender. He, he, he had a case for defensive player of the year. And he had a case for being, you know, the MVP and he won it. And now I just want to see how this season plays out because I really want to know it was that luck was it a surprise factor or is the Bucks really this good and if they are you have to give Giannis credit as being the number one power forward but I also will say it's closer than you think and he's not guaranteed to be the number one power forward this year so he's the number one power forward last year coming into this season but at the end it could be back it could be back ad's but I think they're going to be going at this for a very, very long time. And honestly, it's fun for the fans. It's, it's, it's fun. This is a challenge to them. And being the best at your position is pretty good, especially when you're all our top seven players in the league. That shows you how close AD is to getting his spot back. And it shows you how great Giannis has been and the improvements that he has made and the growth that he has made as a player allowed him to top this list. So let me know what you guys think the number one power forward is. Let me know what you guys think is the top five power forwards. Did I miss somebody? Did I sleep on somebody? Did I overrate somebody? Whatever you feel, let me know in the comment section below. I read every comment, and I want to know you guys listen, what you guys think. Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, I'm gone, and I'll be coming in with the centers tomorrow. Let me know um, what you want to see after that when it comes to predictions. Like this video, check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm 